Good day, folks. Thank you for joining us here at Your Health. On today's program, it's Men's Health Day. We want to talk about prostate issues, men, and we have a little quiz for you to help you to decide if your prostate is causing you problems. This is very informative today, men. You know, this is one of our great fears that we'll have prostate problems as we get older. There's much we can do about this, and we want to talk about it today. But first, let's go to our news. Let's see what's happening in the health world. Repetitive head impacts, as occurs in football, may lead to permanent brain damage. New research from the University of New Hampshire may have discovered a way to reduce football-related impacts and therefore preserve the health and brain power of athletes. The researchers placed impact sensors behind the ear on 50 NCAA Division I college football players during practice over an entire football season. The impact sensors monitored the frequency, location, and acceleration of all head impacts. One half of the players conducted typical football drills while wearing no shoulder pads or helmets. This group also conducted their drills at 50 to 75 percent pace. The other group participated in practice drills in full uniform and speed as usual. They found the group that practiced without shoulder pads or helmets experienced 30 percent fewer head impacts during the course of the football season. The researchers comment helmetless drills could make it safer to play football. The study was published by the Journal of Athletic Training. Well, folks, this is truly good news. From the first study of its kind, when football players practice at 50 to 75 percent of their normal pace without helmets or shoulder pads, it reduces the occurrence of significant head impacts by about 30 percent. See, now we're making some progress. This study from the University of New Hampshire found the typical high school and college football player receives around 1,000 head impacts every year they practice for and play football. 1,000! Well, it is no wonder so many retired professional football players display the symptoms of traumatic encephalopathy or what we used to call dementia pugilistica or the street term punch drunk. Now, this is just the first step of many to follow. We also need improved helmets along with a nutritional plan that provides athletes with all the nutrients needed to heal from head trauma. We already know a lot about nutritional therapies for head trauma. Helpful agents include the omega-3s, the B vitamins, including B12, magnesium, along with curcumin, grapeseed extract, and others. Perhaps the most important nutrient to protect the brain is, of course, vitamin D. If you have a student athlete who loves to play football or some other contact sport, don't wait. Get them started on a nutritional plan like this one. It could spare them great suffering in the years to come. Harmful food poisoning bacteria may survive for months in dry foods. In recent months, there have been several outbreaks of foodborne illnesses associated with packaged dry foods like cracker and cookie sandwiches. Researchers from the University of Georgia wanted to know just how long salmonella could survive in dry foods like crackers. They found cookie sandwiches made with chocolate or vanilla centers provided salmonella with the best environment for long-term survival up to six months. Well, folks, traditionally meats have been the source of foodborne illness or food poisoning as they were once called. Then in recent years, raw salad greens became the number one source of foodborne illness. And now we have the emergence of dry, prepackaged cookie and cracker sandwiches with soft centers as the cause of recent food poisoning outbreaks. We should not be surprised as just about any food can be contaminated. However, what is surprising is just how long the salmonella can survive in these sandwich crackers and cookies and still make us sick for six months, maybe even longer. It is my impression that we will experience more and more food poisoning as time goes by. Why? Well, we have more people than ever and more foods are being prepared than consumed hundreds of miles away and we have more super germs resistant to antibiotics than ever. These problems are also reasons for keeping the immune system as strong as possible in order to resist these potentially deadly pathogens. Chronic pain suppresses the immune system. Researchers from McGill University evaluated the effect of chronic pain on the immune systems of laboratory animals. They found with pain lasting longer than six months, there was an epigenetic effect on anywhere from 100 to over 1,000 different genes. Genes affected include those that control T-cell production and those that modulate inflammation. 
The researchers comment that genetic changes induced by chronic pain help to explain chronic pain's eventual association with life-threatening disease. Well, folks, I think every one of us has known someone who lived for a prolonged period of time in pain. Then after time, these unfortunate souls developed a serious illness like cancer or heart disease. We've all observed this phenomena, but scientists have not been able to explain why chronic pain leads to immune suppression and the emergence of life-threatening disease until now. Chronic pain causes an unfolding or folding of histone protein coats via methylation that either turns on genes of disease or turns off genes of wellness. This in turn has a profound impact on our immune system, opening the door to life-threatening disease. In the past, we've called this the health eroding effect of the chronic stress created by ongoing pain, but now we know exactly how it works through genetic manipulation. What this means to us is we now have a way to help prevent the life-threatening diseases associated with chronic pain. First, we must get people out of pain whenever possible. And second, take higher levels of gene-protecting agents like the vitamins B, C, and D, along with the trace minerals. It may take a while, but I assure you, better therapies for chronic pain and life-threatening disease will emerge as a result of this study. Well, today on Your Health, it's Men's Day. We'll discuss a topic on the minds of most senior men, prostate health. We have a quiz for that. Harvey can't mess with Texas. So donate now to help make Texas whole again. When you want the latest information about your health, when you have questions about handling your finances, when you need prayer and inspiration to live a more abundant life, and when what's happening in the world impacts your community and your family, turn to the 700 Club for analysis and insight into the events of the day. The 700 Club. Welcome back, everyone. It is such a blessing to be with you today. Today's show is really important because we are going to be talking about men's health. So ladies, listen up. We're going to help you keep your man healthy. And men, you need to listen too. It's time to pay attention to your health. So Richard, is it true that men generally tend to ignore their health? Boy, is it ever true, and you put the right priority there. This is really a, a women's show because the women in men's life really help us stay in track with our health. You know, we have a thing called RMDSD syndrome. RMDSD syndrome. Real men don't see doctor syndrome. Isn't that true, guys? We just put it off. We don't want to go. I don't want to surrender control to anybody. I'm in charge of this. Plus, my job. I got to be on the job. I can't miss work. I can't go to the doctor. Well, maybe we should view our bodies, men, like we view our cars. I know me, if I hear one little rattle in my car, ah, I got to get that fixed. I can't and take that's it. True. That's, I, that's it, true. That's it is. And, and when it's time to change that oil, I try not to go even five miles over that mark. And, and so maybe if we approached our, our, our body's health like our car's health, we could be a little more responsible with that. Ladies, it's imperative that you help your husbands, your brothers, your significant others with their health. But we've got to do it the right way, don't we? As men, we often suppress our physical pain and discomfort so that we can get our work done. And, you know, this goes way back to when we were little children. 
We're encouraged not to cry. Now toughen up, Johnny. You know, this is not that bad. We'll get through it. And I'm not saying we should change the way we raise our children. I'm just saying that as men in the roles that we play in life, it, we're encouraged to toughen up and, and, and stick it out and deal with this later because we have work to do today. Am I not right, guys? Isn't this how we do it? This is how we do it. So we've got to deal with it, and we've got to do it the right way. So, ladies, we don't want to... Uh, you know, put all the responsibility in your court, but you play an important role in this. Now, here's a survey of over 1,100 men. Get this. 92% said they always wait a few days before seeking treatment. That's almost everyone. They always wait. What if that symptom is a slight chest pain down into the arm and elbow? Ooh, you may not have a few days. You know, it's been my experience that some of the most serious signs and symptoms of disease are not always the most painful. You break an ankle, boy does that hurt. But that's not something that typically kills us, is it? No, it's not. But you can have heart pain and it's just, wow, oh, it's indigestion, I don't feel well today. Well, you know, we put that sort of thing off, we can really have problems. 92% say they always wait a few days before seeking treatment. 30% wait as long as possible. 36% of the 1,100 polled only go to the doctor if extremely sick. I guess I'm in that category. 39% didn't go to the doctor, but they really didn't have a reason not to go. It'd be a good idea to go, but I'm not going. I, well, why? Well, I, don't, I don't know. I'm just not going. I've heard that many times. 80% said their spouse or significant other influenced their decision to go to the doctor. And I must admit, folks, when I was in the early phases of cancer, I knew something was wrong with me, and I had a feeling it was serious, but I didn't go either. It overwhelmed me. That's what forced me to go see the doctor and find out what was wrong with me. With all I know about health and everything, I did the same thing, and I know that caused my wife to suffer tremendously, and I regret doing that. And I've tried to be... Have I been a little bitter about it since? You're better. I am. So don't, guys, don't, guys, don't do what I did. You know, don't wait too long. Don't wait too long. It can make a big difference in your outcomes. Now, ladies, there's a, a good way and a not so good or productive way to appeal to your husband to take better care of his health. Appeal to his sense of responsibility. He's the leader of the family in the man's role as a leader of the family. And he can't perform that role if he is overwhelmed with illness. He can only lead if he's here. His duty as a father and, let's say, the priest of the family. That's an awfully tough job to do when you're in a sick bed. He cannot complete those duties if he has failing health. Appeal to a sense of stewardship. You know something I've noticed? If it's on my schedule at work, I do it no questions asked because I've worked so hard to become a competent physician. If it's on my appointment schedule, it's easy. Guess what? She slips in, you got an appointment with the oncologist, it's follow-up time, you're going. I respond to that, it's on my schedule. That works, that works. God didn't give us our health to waste it. God does not like wasting energy or blessings. And we shouldn't be the ones to waste them for him. I don't think he likes that. We, these are ways to appeal to your husbands and to men. Your children are watching you. Your patterns, your behavior, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren are watching your behaviors, and they love you and admire you, and they want to be just like you. They're going to be like you if you do this type of thing, and you don't want that for your children and grandchildren. Ladies, if we persistently remind our husbands that they're not taking care of their health, that borders on nagging. And men will wall that off. Now, we probably have it coming, the nagging. I get that. But our response to that is to shut it all off and not pay any attention at all. And now we're getting nowhere. If a reminder fails, ladies, remind him of his responsibility, hand him the appointment card, and say, it's in your hands now, and walk away. We don't want to enable this negligent, irresponsible behavior. Making the appointment works. I advise that to quite a few ladies in practice. 
and consistently the men came in. See, it's on the schedule. It's part of his responsibility. It's good stewardship. I don't want to miss an appointment. I don't want to, you know, that's not good form to make an appointment with a professional for advice and then we just miss that. Nobody likes to do that. So I'm much more likely to follow through. If the appointment's made, the card, the reminder, the appointment card's in the husband's hands, off he goes, he'll take care of it in that way. And if that all fails, just remind him of the car. Hey, your oil is due for a change, Pop. Go get it done. You know what I'm saying? It works. It works. Now, men are obviously different than women. And I think we need to look at some things that challenge us men. And it starts at a very young age. Lifelong habits and practices are established early in life. Can men avoid the health threats by establishing good practices early in life? This is important. Think of it this way. A young man's sense of invincibility may lead to developing bad habits. When we're young, we think we're going to live forever, folks. We've all experienced that. Maybe we try smoking, chewing tobacco. Well, I'm not going to do this for long. And it's not going to kill me. It's not going to heart my health. Maybe we take alcohol and drugs because we, our sense of invincibility. Maybe we engage in high-risk behaviors like riding a motorcycle at 150 miles an hour down the expressway. We've all seen young men do this. If continued, you know it ends bad. It always ends bad, this high-risk behavior. Why do young men do this? Why in the world would a young man put his life at risk for this? Fast, reckless driving, motor vehicle racing, on, off-road, motorcycles, all the things young men do. Dependency-forming habits, they take years to de deteriorate health, and the bad outcome is as inevitable as riding that motor scooter down the highway at breakneck speeds. Much of this behavior, young men, is actually an attempt to relieve stress and create a sense of accomplishment. Boy, I did it. I rode that motorcycle 150 miles an hour dodging traffic, and I survived. I'm special. Makes sense, doesn't it? It sure does. That's what we young men do because of our sense of, of, I don't know, untouchable bulletproofness that we have when we're young. Here's our counter to this. Make a practice of worship and regular exercise, young men. That counters the stress. And establish career goals while pursuing education a more productive and healthy way to achieve peace of mind and a sense of accomplishment. This is the essence of it, young men. Seek training so that you can perform a role in society, in your community, that will hold you in high esteem. We need Joe on this job. He gets the job done. This makes a young man feel proud and a sense of accomplishment that no motorcycle can do. Once you establish these career goals and you have a plan, then the sense of priorities just fall into place and taking care of our health is part of that. This is very important because accidental death is the number one cause of death in men under 40 years of age. Unintended accidents. Something to think about, young guys. We have a break. When we return, I want to tell you, I want to be frank. Let's be honest about this. The top 15 reasons men die and what we can do to counter these reasons when we return. A man pulls out a handgun after refusing to pay a tab at an East El Paso bowling alley. Investigators from the El Paso Police Department are asking for your help in identifying this man through the Crime Stoppers Crime of the Week. On the night of Sunday, February 9, 2020, a group of three men and two women was at the Oasis Lanes located at 1600 North Saragossa. The group ate various items and left without paying. Employees of the business approached the group outside and asked them to pay for the tab. During that time, one of the men pulled out a handgun and made a threat of shooting. The suspects fled in three different cars. The man with the gun was in a black car. The driver of the car was a white female, there was a black female front passenger, and the man with the gun was in the back seat. The armed suspect was a black male with light complexion, tall, with a thin build, and had red braids. He was wearing a red shirt and a red baseball cap on the day of the incident.
Anyone with any information on this armed suspect needs to call Crime Stoppers of El Paso immediately at 566-8477. That's 566-TIPS. Christ in Prophecy, a program that focuses on the fundamentals of Bible prophecy, showing how current events in the news relate to biblical predictions of end time events and the soon return of Jesus. Now, here's your host, Dr. David Reagan. I'm right here on KC Christian Television. Welcome to Manifest, hosted by international evangelist, teacher, and author, Perry Stone. Enjoy unique insight into prophetic and practical truth. It's time to feast on fresh manna, so get ready to be blessed and encouraged. And now, here is your host and teacher, Perry Stone. Hey guys, how's it going? This is Drew from the band Switchfoot. And I've seen the devastating effects that addiction can have. I've had a lot of friends that have gone through hard times struggling with substance abuse. And just want you to know that if that's you, if you or a friend is struggling with addiction, that there's help, you can find help. There is hope when there seems to be no hope. Teen Challenge is there to help and they can be a great resource for you or someone that you know. So here's more information to find out. We're back everyone discussing men's health. This is just amazing information and I hope that all of you men out there are listening up. This is really interesting. So now Richard, we're gonna go into the top 15, I should just say the top 15 killers of our yeah, men. That's it, that's it. You know, we start the uh, risk-seeking behaviors early in life, and perhaps we engage in unhealthy habits. And they have a minimal effect on our health for 10, 15, 20, 25 years. But it's inevitable that the smoking, uh, drug abuse, if that's what you're doing, alcohol, whatever it is, it's going to take its toll on us. So what are the top 15 causes of death of American men? Number one is heart disease, far and away the number one single cause. Over 300,000 deaths of American men every year. Next is lung cancer. There is no doubt the majority of lung cancer cases are uh, at least connected to smoking. It's about 85% are directly linked to smoking. The other 15% is pollution, um, and both. Both will do it asbestos exposure. Next is stroke, 54,000. Emphysema, bronchiectasis. So the top four, smoking makes much worse. Absolutely. Heart disease, lung cancer, stroke, emphysema, bronchiectasis. Next is diabetes. Even our top, all of our top five have lifestyle factors involved in them. Now, people often say, well, my goodness, Dr. Berry, you got to die of something. I would prefer to just die in my sleep, just old and tired. We're done. Okay? That's the ideal, isn't it? Next is motor vehicle accidents, and it is the number one cause of younger men. Motor vehicle, unintended accidents, motor vehicle accidents, top of the mark, 30,000. Prostate cancer is next, 29,000. It is thought that if a man lives in long enough, he will develop prostate cancer, as most 90-year-olds have prostate cancer. But, but, there's a caveat. Most of them are slow-growing and do not cause the death of the elderly male. There are absolutely aggressive types of prostate cancer that can cause death even at 50. But if you live long enough, it's thought prostate cancer hits everyone. Now, there's no real way to prove that, but... I think there's a point to be made from that. It's common. Prostate cancer is common. Next is suicide, despondency leading to suicide. Next is colorectal cancer. We can definitely reduce that with a healthy diet. Ten, pneumonia. Pneumonia, the largest cause of death in elderly men. It's very common. It's often been called the old man's friend because it finally relieves the burden of a life with no point, no, no chance of re rehabilitation or return. Pneumonia is still in the top 10, and it's number one for elderly. Kidney disease, 
Number 11, Alzheimer's disease. Number 12, we're down to 22,000 a year here. Accidental poisonings, 13, overdose. This is, and it may not be intentional, accidental, of course. It's liver disease, 14, and then 15, pancreatic cancers. If you just look at cancer, it's number one when you add all the cancers. And we know without a doubt lifestyle can lower that risk dramatically. Now, let's go to foods, top 10 foods for men. This is interesting because foods from this list will reduce your chances of those top 15 causes of death or put them on to way late in our elderly years. Tomato is perhaps the number one food for men. Why? Because of its lycopene content. Lycopene is an antioxidant that helps with digestion. It acts as a general antioxidant, but it improves prostate health. Prostate health, lycopene. Number two, pumpkin seeds. Put the pumpkin seeds in with your nut mix. You know, people who have nuts on a daily basis, a handful of nuts or more, on average live six years longer. Disease-free living, six years just from nuts. A handful of nuts reduces your risk of heart attack, 40% men. And I, I tell you, now don't get these roasted and highly salted ones. Try to keep them as close to nature as possible. Minimal salt, minimal roasting. A mixed group, we really like dried cranberries because dried cranberries actually inhibit tooth decay. It helps to prevent tooth decay. So you're going to have that mix of nuts with dried cranberries. What a delicious treat. 40% reduced risk of heart attack, six years of extra life. It, it's the oils, the magnesium and the nutrients. Mixed nuts. Broccoli and other cruciferous vegetables, it contains endothrecarbinol, sulforaphan, and other agents that modulate hormones that help to keep from the prostate getting big. Many men who are balding at a young age have an extra enzyme that converts testosterone to dihydrotestosterone, which is a super strong testosterone. And so what happens is we get prostate enlargement, prostate enlargement because the prostate's constantly stimulated by this powerful testosterone. The <clears throat> cruciferous vegetables, especially when combined with tomato, so be like broccoli and tomato together, help to modulate those uh, hormones, removing that excessive stimulation so maybe our prostate glands don't get so big. This is the idea. And there's good research behind this. It's really quite amazing. Next would be carrots for the carotenoids, the lutein, the vision, and blood pressure. Great antioxidant, good for uh, 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 cataract prevention, lutein. Next, pomegranates. I'm glad we have 45 seconds here. The priests in ancient Israel were instructed to put on the bottom of their gowns tassels made to resemble pomegranates. The priests were the, the leaders of the entire community in ancient Israel. And God thought enough of the pomegranate to tell as a symbol for men. This means something, men. Pomegranate is outstanding for prostate health. Peel those pomegranates, eat a few, have a few ounces of the juice several times a week. It's tremendous. Now, we're headed to a break, but we're not through with our top 10 superfood groups for men. We'll do the rest of that when we return in just a minute. We'll be right back. How much time does it take to make someone smile? How much time do you need to really touch a good friend? When you get down to it, some of the most important things happen in a moment. This is the thought behind Our Daily Bread, a collection of devotional stories you can spend just minutes a day with, yet with the power to touch you forever with the Word of God. And you can receive Our Daily Bread at no cost or obligation. Just visit dailyanswers.org or call 800-645-4160 now and we'll deliver Our Daily Bread right to your home. You'll see why millions of readers have turned to Our Daily Bread's inspiring, life-changing stories for their moments of quiet reflection because the most important things don't have to take much time at all. Call 800-645-4160 now for Our Daily Bread.
It's just always so comforting to know that God pursues me. We're his kids. I don't have to go and find my children. I know where they are at all times. God pursued me before I was even born. He says that he knit me together in my mother's womb. I think about God pursuing me that even in the midst of all of my sin and my craziness, he still keeps coming after me. And it reminds me of the scripture that says, when your spirit said, seek my face, my heart said, Lord, thy face will I seek. I love how he wraps his arms around me and I just can feel and sense him and I know that he's real, that I know he's working on my behalf. You know, he endured the cross for the joy of knowing that he would be able to bring me into relationship with him. Thank you, God, for loving me. And although I turn my back on you all the time, you never turn your back on me. He knows where you're at. He knows the situation you're in. And he is pursuing you. He is a lovesick father. God is running after each one of us. He's running after you right now. Just turn around and embrace the plan he has for your life. We're back, everyone, discussing the top 10 superfoods for men's health. So I hope yes. you're writing this down. And, you know, don't forget, you can always get a copy of the show. It's a great one. Maybe later you can show it to your husband, father, brother, son, and help them to see their, there's a really important place for them to pay attention to their health, too. So, Richard, these top 10 foods, and so far, these foods are all ones that can taste Absolutely. really good. Absolutely that are easy to get yes. in your diet. Yes. So we have tomatoes, pumpkin seeds, broccoli, and when you combine tomato and broccoli, it's very helpful and powerful for the prostate and other organs. Carrots, and then that pomegranate. Used symbolically with the priests of ancient Israel, we need to pay attention to this symbolism. These are little clues. God gives us information if we're paying attention. Little clues. By the way, pro, um, pomegranate juice it has a sugar content, but it does not raise your blood glucose level because it's a glycoprotein, a sugar attached to a protein. It's used in cell signaling not to raise your blood sugar. So it is a fruit juice you can drink, men, without, you know, weight gain. That's nice to know. And it doesn't take a couple ounces of pomegranate, three or four ounces of pomegranate, two or three times a, a week. That makes a difference. Next, small deep sea fish and their omega-3s. Uh, prov also provides zinc, which is very important for prostate function, total body of benefit. Yogurt and all the fermented dairies, very important for intestinal health. Probiotics raise immune function. And it also helps. Have you ever noticed when you have a tummy ache, it makes you depressed? Because the intestine makes far more serotonin than the brain. When the gut is happy, the brain is happy. This is what psychiatrists are missing. You have a chronically depressed person, they have intestinal problems, I promise you. Treat the gut, you treat the mind. Think about it, guys. Garlic doesn't take much of this powerful spice to help improve the cardiovascular system. Antifungal, powerful, uh, helps keep the yeast at bay. All the vitamin C rich foods. A little citrus every day works wonders. It truly does. And if you're going to eat grains, which I recommend you minimize, Use the whole grains for the fiber and the B vitamins and vitamin E, regularity, all of that. Those are your superfoods. Incorporate them into your diet. Now, quickly, because we have a prostate quiz, I just want to go over quickly some of the more prominent dietary supplements we use for the health conditions, heart disease. That's your awesome foursome. You know, your CoQ10, L-carnitine, D-ribose, magnesium. Some people will add uh, the omega-3s as well. Cancer, your vitamins, your multiple vitamins are very important. Mushrooms, glucoman and fiber. Uh, the endo 3 carbonyl, noni juice is important. Pomegranate juice, particularly for, for prostate cancers and vitamin D. Diabetes, alpha lipoic acid, chromium picolinate, fenugreek, oil of oregano, vitamin D. You know, we should all, men, be on our vitamin D and our good multiple. Then you add these things to that if you have one of these conditions. Uh, liver disorders, multiple vitamins, inositol, milk thistle is very important here. We have programs on each and every one of these, so I, I don't want to spend too much time because today is our time for prostate health. One of men's greatest fears is that they will suffer a disease of the prostate. 
especially cancer. But you know what's even more common is prostate hypertrophy, enlargement of this gland. When the gland enlarges, it obstructs the outlet of the bladder, and we develop urinary tract symptoms, and they can be severe. You know, prostate enlargement, before they learned how to clear that pathway out with the transurethral resection of the prostate, men call it the rotorooter. Let's just call it what we call it, the rotorooter of the, of the urethra and the prostate gland. Uh, if you block that urinary outflow, it can kill you. The urine backs up into the kidney. We call that hydronephrosis, and it is a death sentence if it's not relieved. So that's the end effect, and it is a miserable way to go, men. So let's take the quiz. Let's find out the truth. Do you need your prostate checked? This is what we're going to look for. Now, the scores are from 0 to 5. 0 is a good score. This is like golf. The lower your score, the better. Now, incomplete emptying. Over the past month, men, how often have you had a sensation of not being able to empty your bladder completely after you finish? You walk away, go, hmm, I think I could go a little more. Maybe you go back and try. How many times over the last month has that happened? Not at all is 0. Almost always is 5. You grade it in between. Maybe it's a 3. Incomplete emptying. Next, frequency. Over the past month, how often have you had to urinate again less than an hour or two after you finish urinating? Ur urinate. And when you go back, it's not a full bladder. It's just a tinkle or two, you know? Frequency, the need to go frequently, even though it's not a full bladder. Zero is a good score. Never had it, never bothered. Five is, boy, that's a daily thing for me. Maybe it's a three for you. Next, intermittency. Over the last month, how often have you found you stopped your urine stream and started it several times? You get it going and it stops. Oh, I got to get it going again. Boy, this is hard to get it going. Zero is never. Five is every time you urinate. Next, urgency. You cannot wait to get to the, ur to the bathroom. Uh, it's like the guy pulling the outhouse behind his car, so it's easy to get to, right? Urgency. Over the last month, how difficult have you found it to postpone urination? Got to stay close to the bathroom. Zero is never. Five is every single time. Maybe you have a two, a three, a four. We're going to add these up in a minute. Next is a weak stream. You have a full bladder. You know you could really go, but you're just dribbling and it's getting worse and worse. Zero is never, five is every time, maybe it's only occasionally. That'd be a two or a three. Whatever it is, you give yourself your score. Straining, do you have to really work to concentrate, think about it? Over the past month, how often have you had to push or strain to begin your urination? Zero is negative, never, never have trouble with it. Five is every single time. Last one, noctiuria. Knock to urine. This means over the past month, how many times did you typically get up to urinate during the night? Remember when you were a little kid, you slept the whole night through, a teenager all night through. You never got up to use the bathroom, but slowly, around age 30, 40, you start getting up. 50, it's twice a night. 65, 70, it's three or four times a night. How many times? Zero is never. Five is five or more times. Then the last one before we go to the break, it's the new one they've added, the quality of life. If you had to spend the rest of your life with your current symptoms of your urinary tract, how would you feel? Zero is delighted. Oh, it'd be perfect because I'm doing really well. Or five, six, number six, is terrible. There's no way I could imagine my life. That's six points. Now, we're going to go to our break. You add up your score, and we're going to tell you what your score means when we return. We'll be right back. Salvation Army. What do you think when you hear the name? Red kettles? Donated clothes? Helping the homeless? These are all part of the Salvation Army, but they are only a fraction of what it does. As one of the oldest and largest charities in the world, many people are surprised to know that the Salvation Army is first and foremost a church. It was founded in London, England in 1865 by Christian evangelists William and Catherine Booth. The idea was simple. Share the gospel of Jesus Christ by feeding the hungry, housing the homeless, and freeing people from addiction. 150 years later, 
the Booth's mission has spread across the planet. Today, the Salvation Army operates in more than 120 countries. And in the United States alone, the Salvation Army serves about 30 million people a year. Along with Christmas assistance, the Salvation Army is focused on providing hunger relief, housing, and educational services to kids. These and other services are available in Salvation Army Worship and Service Centers. These centers are usually located in poor and crime-ridden neighborhoods where few venture to serve. The Worship and Service Centers are led by Salvation Army officers, ordained ministers who have studied at least two years at Salvation Army Training School. It operates stores to help fund rehabilitation centers. These centers provide free, long-term treatment for people battling addiction. So, when you donate goods to the Salvation Army, your old stuff is being used to save lives. Of all the services offered, none of them can happen without the love and compassion of volunteers. Volunteers allow the Salvation Army to spend less on wages and more on serving people. There are about 3.4 million Salvation Army volunteers in the United States. Not surprisingly, the Salvation Army also needs cash donations to operate. In the U.S., more than $3 billion per year is raised. About $140 million of this comes from kettle donations in the six weeks before Christmas. America's favorite charity shares the gospel of Jesus Christ, offering its services to millions without discrimination. In the words of William Booth, the Salvation Army stands for hope that when every other light is extinguished and every other star has gone down, this one gleams shine steadily and clearly out in the darkened sky. If only I could get to the Salvation Army, they will do something for me. The Salvation Army, doing the most good. At the VLB, we believe that those who faithfully serve our country deserve more than our thanks. They deserve the best Texas has to offer. That's why the VLB goes above and beyond federal benefits to offer Texas veterans special home and land loans at historically low rates. If you're a Texas veteran or you love a Texas veteran, contact the VLB today and come home to the benefits you deserve. Okay, we're back, everyone. Now, I hope you've added up your scores. So, Richard, you can tell everyone. Maybe we want to describe again how we scored this and then yes. give them what the scores mean. Yeah, uh, zeros, one, two, those are better scores. And the higher scores, five to six. The six is only plays in with your quality of life. If you just be miserable living with this the rest of your life. So, add those up. If you have a, this is also the International Prostate Symptom Score. If you want to look this up and spend some time with it and really understand the survey, that, that'd be a good idea. You can get that online. It's, this is a commonly done in urologist's office and family practitioners. If your score is zero to seven, you're in pretty good shape. You are. You're doing really well. Uh, if you have eight to 19 points, you're moderately symptomatic, you need to start thinking of a plan because our natural measures and the medicines, either one, whichever way you decide to go, work best with time. See, this is a mechanical obstruction problem. We have to mechanically reduce the obstruction. That takes time unless you cut it out. And that's what we're all hoping to avoid if we can. We want to avoid that cutting out. That's a sensitive area. I mean, let's be honest. We don't want to do that unless we have to. If we have to, fine. 8 to 19, moderately symptomatic. If you are above 20, 20 to 35, you're severely symptomatic, and you need to take action. Go talk to them. You know, talking to a doctor doesn't necessarily mean you've got to do everything they tell you to do. At least you're talking. You're starting the process. You're uh, running the possibilities, you know? And maybe you find somebody you connect there. Boy, that guy was sharp. I, you know, I trust this man or woman to do this work. I think they'd do me a great job. When I need it, I know where to go. That's a sense of comfort, isn't it? Then we know where we can get our help. So if you have 20 or above, we need to take steps sooner than later. Now, the International Urology and Nephrology Journal states, 
from a review of the available information on benign prostate enlargement or hypertrophy, same thing, saw palmetto, beta cytosterol, vitamin E therapy, lessens nighttime urination, it lessens frequency, and it diminishes the overall symptoms of straining, weak stream, urgency, this quiz you just took. Your score will drop if you do these natural measures. However, it takes time. If you are dribbling five times in the middle of the night and you think taking a salt palmetto pill is going to cure you in two days, you're wrong. It's not going to happen. But they have been able to prove in 18 months you will begin to show demonstrable improvement. Now, I'm not saying it takes everyone two years of salt palmetto to improve. Many people say within the first week, you know, I only got up once last night and I usually get up three times. I've heard that a lot. That's more common than I have to wait 18 months to get help. I'm making the point if you are highly advanced with a very large baseball to uh, grapefruit size prostate, that's a tough one to do, even with medications. Multiple studies and I've reviewed the literature for you, and, and I've done it multiple times. I try to keep up on all these things. Multiple studies now show it takes time, up to two years, for full response. Many get help in the first week, and I'm serious about that. Saw palmetto, here's your list of agents shown to help. Saw palmetto, pygeum, selenium, zinc, beta cytosterol, pumpkin seeds, flaxseed oil, and omega-3s, and vitamin E. I will say them again because this is so important for men. Ladies, write this down. Your husband needs this list. Here's the agents that have been shown to be helpful in benign prostate enlargement. Does nothing for prostate cancer. That's a different subject. Here we are. Saw palmetto, pygeum, selenium, the trace mineral selenium, zinc, trace mineral zinc, beta cytosterol and saw palmetto has beta cytosterol in it that's where we get that pumpkin seeds flaxseed oil omega-3s and vitamin e what this combination does it modulates the hormone drive that fuels prostate enlargement make sense so to counter that it takes some time it would be ideal if a man started a saw palmetto program in his 40s now you're thinking ahead. Now you're thinking ahead. And then we can make some progress with that. Make sense? Let's do this. Let's go to our break. We have a gentleman who has called, and he is really interested in formulating a prostate health plan. And so we're going to do that for him when we return. If you had to choose between food and gas for your car, between food and medical care, between food and the roof over your head, what would you choose? Every day, millions of Americans are making these difficult choices. Each month, 34% of households served by the Feeding America Network have to make the choice between paying for food and paying for transportation to get to work or school. 31% of households have to choose between paying for medical care and paying for meals. And more than 27% have to make the choice to feed their family or pay for housing for the month. If you had to choose, what would you do? The Feeding America Nationwide Network of Food Banks serves every community in America, providing nutritious meals to people struggling with hunger. Together, we can solve hunger in America, so no one has to choose anything ahead of feeding their family. We know the face of hunger is changing. Your neighbor, your coworker, your brother, your grandmother. Every day, people around you could be struggling with those tough choices, and they wouldn't be alone. The Feeding America Hunger in America 2014 study shows that one in seven Americans turns to our network for help each year. That's more than 46 million Americans, including 12 million children and 7 million seniors. The people we serve have jobs, raise families, face health issues, serve our country, and seek education. 
Today's face of hunger is hardworking and hopeful. Underemployment, stagnant wages, and a rising cost of living have impacted these families and individuals. More than half of households served by the Feeding America Network report at least one person working in the past year. The person who has worked the longest is more likely to be employed part-time than full-time, and many are giving back to the country. 20% of households have at least one member that has served in the U.S. military. Our clients struggle with rising medical costs and ongoing health issues. One in three households has a member living with diabetes, 58% report high blood pressure, and 79% are purchasing cheaper, unhealthy food in an effort to provide enough food for the household. The median monthly household income of Feeding America Network clients is $927. Like an increasing number of Americans, the people we serve look to education to improve their lives. 19% of households report having an adult student in the home. With the support of the Feeding America Network, families and individuals have the fuel to make positive choices and work toward a better future. Through your neighborhood food pantry, local youth program, nearby senior center, or a meal kitchen, the Feeding America Network is helping in your community. We believe everyone can choose to help create a hunger-free America. Individuals, charities, businesses, and government all have a role in ending hunger. Donate. Volunteer. Advocate. Educate. Join us. Together, we can solve hunger. Your health is brought to you by BioInnovations, trusted products for your health and well-being. We're back, everyone. I just want to let you know that at BioInnovations, we now have a Dr. Becker's Bionutrients men's formula, which is a prostate formula. This is just amazing. It's that saw palmetto with the pygeum, the beta cytosterols, really great formula for you. And that one is going to be buy one, get one free today, so don't miss out on that one. We just call it the saw palmetto complex. So, Richard, this is just amazing information. Um, so much that we've learned today. Mm-hmm. You know, and I know that time is short, so we had a man, I guess it's, it's Joe from Pennsylvania that's, that's on the yes. line. He took the quiz with you, the prostate yes. quiz, and he has kind of a high score. Yeah. He has a 22. Yeah, that's so, getting into the moderately yeah, symptomatic. He's yeah. up several times a night. He has to work at it, get it going. It, boy, right. get started right away, Joe. Um, you know what happens to many men? They think water is the culprit. You know, they're focusing on urination, so if I didn't have to drink so much, I wouldn't pee so much. Right. That's the worst to do. Then we're chronically dehydrated, and it leads to a whole cascade of events. It's not going to help you one bit. So we want it to, to get to where we can have our eight glasses of water a day, and things are flowing free, like nature intended. And it is possible. It's very likely that we can do, because we're just in time for Joe. What are we going to do? First and foremost, for all conditions, men, you need your five to 8,000 units of vitamin D every day and your good multiple vitamin. Uh, don't be one of the crowd. The majority in America are malnourished. They're eating tons of poorly nutrient food, gaining weight when they're really just looking for good solid nutrition. Vitamin D and a good multiple. Next, your saw palmetto and pygeum. Basically what we have in these two brilliant herbs, saw palmetto is native to Florida. The Seminole Indians used it. This is where we got this knowledge. Um, it has agents that act like hormones, modulating the, uh, the hormone system in men, but they're not true hormones. And this beta cytosterol, think of it as plant cholesterol. You see, plants don't make cholesterol. They don't, but they make this cytosterol that looks like cholesterol, and since testosterone is made from cholesterol, it gets into the mechanism of making hormones, and it reduces that dihydrotestosterone's effect on the gland. So you have a hormonal effect, in essence, that's slowly but surely shrinking the gland. And since you're starting this when you're mildly symptomatic, you have time to get this to go to work for you. So the saw palmetto pygeum spiked with the beta cytosterol is just the thing for this condition. Now, there's some other things. Pumpkin seeds contain 
peptides, pro short protein chains, amino acid chains, that also affect the hormonal cascade in men. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. These small peptides, they act as hormones, and they help to shrink the prostate over time. Pumpkin seeds and pumpkin seed oil both contain this. Flax seed oil contains lignans. These are special fat-soluble molecules that influence hormones just like the flaxseed oil, the, flax seed oil the, the, the saw palmetto, the pygium. This is what we're trying to do, safe hormone manipulation. The medications are powerful hormone manipulators. That's the next step if we can't help with this. Um, legume isoflavones, same type of thing. So eat beans. You know, if we start with a small amount of beans and increase, you become tolerant of beans. Inositol and IP6 plays a role here, and don't forget the pomegranate. Pomegranate juice helps to keep PSA levels down. It's more for the prostate cancer prevention, but who wants either problem of the prostate? Two or three, four ounces of pomegranate juice a couple times a week, it works wonders, folks. It is amazing stuff. Remember the biblical example of pomegranate. We don't want to ignore that profound symbolism, men. Every bit of knowledge, it all matters when it comes from that grand book called the Bible. It all matters. Well, that's it, men. That's your program. I hope we've made a difference for you. We need you. We need you here for a long time. Thank you for your kind attention here at Your Health. We'll see you tomorrow, folks. Bye-bye, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow right here on Your Health. Bye-bye. Your Health with Richard and Cindy Becker is underwritten by The Herb Garden. We didn't have much to give then. Then crop left us with hardly enough apples to fill the stand. So when they showed up firing them mean looks around the place and staring us down on prices, well, I was, I was angry. Didn't seem to bother my father, though. He let them set a fair price. They were too low, I thought. Then he did more. More than I would have done. He had me load another bushel of apples in their trunk. I learned later on that this family was in need. We did the right thing that day. The greatest gift we give. It's in our heart what we believe, the way we live. Caring for others. Pass it on. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. Something's not right. I'm failing. Screwed up. Alone. Fear is killing me. I need a way out. The emptiness we feel is real. Our decisions, our sins, have separated us from God. It's like a wall. But what you need to know is that there is a way. To remove the wall and find forgiveness. Hope. Freedom. Put your trust in God's Son, Jesus Christ. Turn it all over to Him. Find some peace. He died to set us free from sin. He suffered and died for you. That's how much Jesus loves us. Call 888-NEED-HIM or visit needhim.org. Learn how Jesus can tear down the wall separating you from God. It's not about church or religion. It's about a relationship. One you need. Now and forever. Please call 888-NEED-HIM right now. We aren't meant to do this alone. You are watching Life Christian Broadcasting Network on KSCE Channel 38, serving El Paso, Texas, Las Cruces, New Mexico, Suidad Juarez, KVBA Channel 14, serving Almogordo, New Mexico, KGSC Channel 33, serving Cheyenne, Wyoming.